Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an algorithm for doing convolution of two sequences using the Z transforms. So, an algorithm, we are going to look at an algorithm for convolution of two sequences or two signals using the Z transforms. So the algorithm can be stated as follows. The first step is we have to compute the Z transform of the we have to compute the Z transform or Z transforms of the two signals of the two signals. So that is the first step that is given the signal x1 of n we have to compute or we have to evaluate x1 of z which is the z transform of x1 of n and x2 of z will be the z transform of x2 of n that means we are shifting from time domain to Z domain. So that is the first step. Now the second step is to multiply the two Z transforms. Second step is to multiply the two Z transforms. That is we define X of Z as X1 of Z multiplied by x2 of z. So, this is based on the convolution property of the z transform. That is convolution time domain is equivalent to multiplication in z domain. So, this operation is completely in z domain or this step is completely done in z domain. Now, we look at step 3. The step 3 we have to just find the inverse z transform. Inverse z transform of x of z that is x of n is the inverse z transform of x of z that is this operation is again this operation is or this step is again about or converting the information in z domain back to time domain that is we get the time domain sequence back so let us look at an example illustrating this algorithm. Consider a sequence x1 of n which is given by the values 1, minus 2 and 1 and n equal to 0 is here. So, x of n is 1, minus 2, 1, n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2. So, we have three values. And consider another signal x2 of n which is basically a rectangular window from values from n equal to 0 to 5. So, we have six ones. So, this is our n equal to 0. So, now we have to find the convolution of these two signals by using the z transform. So, first let us look at step 1. In step 1, we have to compute the z transforms of the two signals. So, x1 of z will be equal to z transform of x1 of n. So, by applying the definition of z transform, this will be e equal to summation n equal to 0 to 2 x1 of n z power minus n. So, that means we have 1 minus 2 and 1. So, it will be z transform will be 1 minus 2 z power minus 1 and plus z power minus 2. So, that will be the z transform of x1 of n. Similarly, we will find the z transform x2 of z that is which is the z transform of x2 of n which is going to be the summation n equal to 0 to 5 z power minus n since x2 of n is 1 for this interval. So, x2 of z is given by n equal to 0 we have 1 plus n equal to 1 z minus 1 and so on that is z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 plus z power minus 4 plus z power minus 5. So, that, that is the second z transform. 
So we have completed the step one. Now in step two, we have to find the product of these two z transforms. That is x1 of z multiplied by x2 of z. Therefore, x of z will be equal to the product of 1 minus 2 z inverse plus z power minus 2 multiplied by 1 plus z inverse plus z power minus 2 plus z power minus 3 plus z power minus 4 plus z power minus 5. So, you have to find the product of these two polynomials. So, we will start with a degree 0 or a power 0 that is 1 into 1. We have 1 and now this next term will be uh, z power minus 1 that is terms containing z power minus 1. So, that will be 1 into z inverse that is 1 minus 2 into z inverse. So, minus 2 into z inverse and now we will go for z power minus 2 it is 1 into z power minus 2 that is plus 1 and minus 2 z inverse into 1. So, minus 2 z inverse into z inverse. So, minus 2 and z power minus 2 into 1. So, plus 1 z power minus 2. Similarly, for z power minus 3 also we will have the same coefficients. So, it will be 1 minus 2 plus 1 into z power minus 3 and again for z power minus 4 we have 1 minus 2 plus 1 z power minus 4 and for z power minus 5 1 into z power minus 5 minus 2 z inverse into z power minus plus uh, and plus z power minus 4. So, that will be minus 2 and again z power minus 2 into z power minus 3. So, plus 1 z power minus 5 and for z power minus 6 there will be a small change that is uh, for 1 uh, there is no corresponding term for the 1s to get a z power minus 6. So, we have minus 2 z power minus 1 into z power minus 5 that will be minus 2 and then z power minus 2 into z power minus 4 plus 1 will be z power minus 6 and finally we have z power minus 2 into z power minus 5 that will be z power minus 7. So, that is the total sequence or the total polynomial. So, x of z will be can be summarized as 1 minus z inverse and then this term this term term from z power minus 2 to z power minus 5 are all zeros and then for z power minus 6 we have minus z power minus 6 and finally z power minus 7. So, this is the final z transform. Now, let us look at step 3. Step 3 is to find x of n by simply finding the inverse z transform of x of z. That means, we have to find inverse z transform of the result we achieve the, the previous the result we just computed. That means, that means x of z is given by 1 minus z inverse minus z power minus 6 plus z power minus 7. So, we have to find the inverse z transform of z power minus that is we have to find the inverse z transform of 1 minus z power minus 1 minus z power minus 6 plus z power minus 7. So, for this uh, polynomial the inverse transform is straightforward by that is we have to just compare this one with the definition x of z equal to summation x of n z power minus n. So, by comparing this z transform with the definition we can easily write the values of x of n as 1 and z power minus 1 has a coefficient minus 1. So, second value is minus 1 and then third value, fourth value and fifth value are all zeros that is minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and minus 5. z power minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5 are all having coefficients 0 and z power minus 6 has minus 1 and minus 7 has 1. So, that is the resulting sequence. x of n is equal to 1 comma minus 1 and then 4 zeros and minus 1 plus 1. So, that is the resulting convolution and we can easily verify the uh, length of the sequence as uh, 3 plus 6 minus 1 because the sequence length x sequence x1 of n has length 3 and x2 of n has length 6. So, the total sequence for the convolution should have 8 values. So, this has obviously and we can easily verify that this x of n has 8 values. So, to summarize, we have looked at an algorithm for convolution of two sequences using z transforms. That is the first, the algorithm has basically three steps. The first step involves computation of the z transforms of the two signals and the second uh, and then we basically convert the information from time domain to z domain. The second step, in the second step, we multiply the two z transforms to come to find the combined z transform and in the third step, we invert this z transform to obtain the convolution sequence and we also looked at an example uh, illustrating this algorithm. 
Thanks for watching.